Welcome to the PHNX Wildcat Show. Shout out to OG's Brands, the official sponsor of Flavoring Fridays. Head on over to OG's Brands to see their full lineup and find out where you can purchase. All right, now the man that needs no introduction in Arizona basketball circles, Mr. Kyle Dodd. Hello, KD. How you doing, dude? What's up, Mike? How are you, man? All right, let's talk. Let's get it out of the way first. Um, first place, Arizona State Sun Devils. Love. I, I, uh, my, my producer, Jacob Franklin messages me all the time saying, telling you this team's good. What have you seen? Because you have been a huge supporter of Bobby Hurley throughout all of this. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, it's a team that was, uh, kind of searching for identity for most of the preseason. Um, as you know, the world we live in, in, in college sports, you got a lot of new faces and not a lot of new guys trying to figure out, you know, how to play together, how right. to, how to connect. And I think they, you know, they had some injuries, they had some some guys beat up, and, you know, just over the last couple of weeks, I think the Christmas break uh, did them some good because they've played some some much better basketball, and we're sitting here 3-0. and So, uh, you know, it doesn't happen a lot at ASU. I think this right. is like our fifth 3-0 and start in, in, you know, since we've been in the pack. So, all right. Good. Now, let's talk about it. You put out a full, a very passionate you had a, a Twitter spaces that you were on as well, uh, telling people how much you back Bobby Hurley and back the A, both of those simultaneously on the same thing. <laughs> but uh, we're, then we'll get into some Arizona basketball fans. But uh, just talk about what you see in Bobby Hurley, because Ky Kyle Dodd is squarely in Bobby Hurley's corner. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, uh, you know, for Arizona State basketball, obviously we don't have the the tradition or the history that you guys have. Um, and, I, you know, just I was telling people, you know, I mean, we, he, since Bobby's been here, we've seen some things that I just didn't think we would see at ASU. I mean, buildings are have been full, uh, you know, some of the starts we've had and, um, you know, back to back to back 21 seasons. I mean, that hadn't happened in almost 50 years. I mean, go, we would have gone to a, you know, a, a third straight NCAA tournament had the world not shut down just some of those things and just the relevance and the energy around the program um, and how, and how hard the guys play and, and the, you know, the ability to get in on different players that we haven't been in on the past. And, you know, I just think at ASU, this is, you know, and I mentioned it, you know, too, on that spaces is, is, you know, it's a different time, you know, there's, there's not a lot of people that are true, Sun Devils or true Wildcats or, or true Bruins anymore because these guys are all, let's face it, they're all pros. They're all on contract years and they're all trying to get their next deal, which is whether it's back at their school or the next school. And, and so, um, you know, my, my whole point was if there's, you know, we're not going to see a lot of four year guys uh, places anymore. So, you know, if you're looking for a true Sun Devil, I, I, you know, I was telling our fans, it's a, true, a true Sun Devil. Bobby's a Sun Devil. I mean, he wants to be here. He could have gone elsewhere, and, and he wanted to be here. And so that's that's why, you know, I, I'm I'm thrilled that he's still uh, he running our program. All right, now let's talk some good stuff. Let's talk Arizona basketball now. Um, Listen, we're, three, we're two and a half years into the Tommy Lloyd era. I believe this is Arizona's best team. I know you've been admiring from afar. What sticks out to you about Arizona basketball so far this year, Mr. Kyle Dodd? Uh, other than Adam Sandler hooping with the managers yesterday, right. by the way, you know, I, I was Very feeling cool. pretty good, you know, about us last night. And then I had to get on Twitter and see that. And that was probably the coolest thing I've ever seen. So, um, no, I mean, honestly, you know, I, I think, um, you guys as well, Arizona, it's scary because I think you're still learning how to play with each other as right. well, you know, and how to connect and, and trust each other. And, and that's scary because, um, they are just so talented. It was good. Um, you know, it's always fun to watch them play. You know, they Tommy just does such a good good job on the offensive end, and those guys uh, seem like they, you know, really have a free flowing style, and they 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 can score with ease. And man, I love the. I've always been an admirer of uh, of Keisha Johnson, so that was a huge pickup. I think um, you know, and for you guys, and you know, obviously Caleb Love, and then you know. Um, your boy uh, Boswell looked like he bounced back a little last night. Right. That pass was incredible, by the way. That Let's talk hand. that pass. Was yeah. that about as good a pass? That was some Magic Johnson stuff where yeah. you got your left hand and you spin it, three dribble. Uh, Kyle, that's about as good a pass you're ever going to see. Yeah, I mean, you know, I always tell people as a point guard and a guard in general, your job is to get the ball 
in your scores, you know, in his hands, in his rhythm, not your rhythm. So it, you may be out of rhythm as a guy, you know, handling the basketball, but that ball has got to be gone. And, you know, when I used to train players that I always, I always used to use the phrase on time, on target, you know, so get that ball when that, that score is ready to score. So that was like the perfect example of that, I mean, he's three quarter court, no, in no position to pass the basketball, but with his offhand pushes the ball ahead and not only pushes the ball ahead, he has enough like English on the ball to just hit a guy in stride. I mean, off two bounces. I mean, yeah, I, I think the angle I saw on Twitter, um, from the baseline was even more impressive than the, like the TV version. But yeah, it was a, as a point guard. Uh, yeah, I, I have to appreciate that was, that's probably as good as you'll see all year. You mentioned Keyshawn Johnson. I want to ask you about this. Why is Keyshawn, why can't, why aren't there more players like Keyshawn Johnson? What I mean by this is if you're uber athletic and you're six foot seven, why aren't there just more high energy, more high impact type players, uh, Kyle Bod? Man, that's, that's a question I ask all the time. Cause, uh, you know, he's a guy that just has a high, high motor, you know, it's, it's kind of a throwback guy. And, you know, I used to tell big guys all the time that I worked with that, you know, if you just do a every night, if you're an athlete and you're strong and you're, you have his body type and his athleticism, if you do a couple things every night, you run the floor and you go to the glass every time you got eight to 10, right? You got eight to 10 points a night right there. I mean, right. if you're as athletic as him, you're going to get a couple tip ins. You're going to get a couple dunks, you know, out on, on the break. So you're at eight to 10 already starting to, you know, and then that's now you made it make a couple shots. You're at 16, you're at 18. Now you're having a, yourself a nice night. And I, I just think there's so many things you can't control right. in, a, in the course of a hoops game, energy effort, is one of those and man that guy plays plays his tail off and um you know I, I that's the thing that i kind of admire about our group as well is just they they always play hard man and that that's that's half the battle these days that is more that's more than half the battle you got to get guys that play hard and see that's what i like about this arizona team too you also can have some you also need to have toughness kyle dodd had toughness no matter what you thought about him kyle dodd was okay breaking your uh, hand with his jaw and that's where uh, with Arizona, it's kind of the same thing. You bring in players like a Caleb Love. You bring in somebody like a Keyshawn Johnson. This is with all due respect to, you know, the Azuas Tabellises and uh, Courtney Ramey's. But this is a different level of uh, this is a different level of physicality, a different level of an athlete, uh, KD. Yeah, and I thought, and again, yeah, you're, you're right. No disrespect to those guys that you had last year. But like a guy like Tabellis, I thought, you know, there was times when somebody got in his stuff a little bit and, you know, got it and he he – didn't not that he shied away, but it just he wasn't comfortable in those situations right. where you're not going to do that. You're not going to punk <laughs> Keyshawn Johnson, right? Um, so I mean, I think that's going to be the real challenge for teams facing the the Cats the rest of the way is just you know you're not going to out tough them. Um, they obviously can match you athletically. They can match you with size. They can shoot the basketball. And to be honest, I didn't think that uh, I didn't see. I couldn't see who was going to beat Arizona, um, you know, just, just from the preseason and, you know, the rest of the, a lot of the league has been <laughs> right. up and down or a mess, you know, uh, certain teams are a mess right now, but um, yeah, I just, I didn't see who was going to, maybe, you know, I thought, yeah, maybe might, someone might jump up like a, you know, a Colorado at home or Utah at home, you know, but I didn't see, uh, I don't see, I didn't see a lot of losses on, on the, on the schedule for that roster. All right, we're going to get a preview of what Arizona fans need to know about Utah because Arizona State just vanquished Utah. But first, have you ever been to a legal Pete's, Kyle Dodd? Uh, I have not. You have not been to a legal no. Pete's. I find that very hard to believe that a cool uh, person like Kyle Dodd has not uh, been to a legal Pete's. I, I I need to remedy that, man. I, I need to make a tr make a trip there. All right. Well, whether you're shopping for a margarita maniac or a queso connoisseur, Illegal Pete's is your one-stop shop to spread the cheer. Grab $100 in Illegal Pete's gift cards and get an extra $25 for free. Looking for some fun stocking suffers? Check out their holiday uh, March sale. All t-shirts are just $15 through the end of the year and game time. Let's say you're looking to go to Arizona ASU at ASU. I lost a bet to Kyle Dodd. Um, I have to... We'll get to that in just a second, but uh, <laughs> we'll, uh, but uh, first download the game time app, create an account and use code PHNX for $20 off your first purchase terms apply again, create an account and redeem code PHNX for $20 off download game time, last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. All right. Um, here's the deal. I, uh, I have to go to the Arizona State game, and I've got to wear a Kyle Dodd jersey. Thanks to the <laughs> Cambridge brother for making the hoisting that three or almost half court shot. Do you have the jersey that I have to wear, Kyle Dodd? Uh, I do. Uh, not not with me on the on the show here today, but yeah, I, uh, 
I do have it. So I have a couple options for you. you whatever you want. You can ruin gold or white, man. Uh all right. Now, a lot of people are asking, do you actually back the A? This is true. You do back the A. We have a Twitter profile picture of you back in the A, Kyle. Uh, that was my bet that I lost to you last year that I did pay up on. And I think it's, you know, what's funny is like when I did that, when I paid up on that bet, I had some of the people that are like the harshest, meanest U of A fans to me normally on Twitter. Once I did that, like I had people messaging me, DMing me saying, hey, man, I really respect that you paid up on that bet. You know, I, I'm sorry for some of the stuff I said to you or, or whatnot. But uh, yeah, I did pay up. But uh, you know, like I said, as I get older, man, this this rivalry, I will never not hate you, University of Arizona. But it it means less and less um, as I get older, and and you know, I just I'm just enjoying sharing times with my my kids and t talking about all the the good rivalry moments. And uh, yeah, that was certainly one of them. The Des came or Des came through for me, man, because uh, I didn't think I was going to win many bets with you. <laughs> right. It, all right. Now PB, it is pronounced Keyshot, not Keyshot. Keyshot. Okay. Now tell us what we need to know about Utah. You guys just got done uh, beating Utah at, uh, actually it was kind of a, uh, kind of a butt kicking there in the second half. What do Arizona fans need to know about Utah, Kyle Dodd? Yeah, man, they, um, you know, I, this is one of the teams that I thought, you know, going into the pack, I thought, you know, Utah, Arizona, and Colorado had, you know, obviously good non-conferences and you kind of, you saw teams that you could have some success and then, um, you know, everybody else was kind of trying to figure themselves out. But Utah is a team that shares the basketball extremely well, uh, moves the ball extremely well, really good shooting team. Um, Carlson is uh, much improved, Got you know, he's gotten better every year. Um, he's a heck of a player down there. I, I think, uh, you know, we bothered them. Uh, with their with our athleticism i thought we overwhelmed them a little bit sped them up took them took them out of some of the stuff that they they want to run so you know i anticipate you know tommy and his staff watching uh watching the uh, the tape and probably trying to do a little bit of the same uh defensively to them but yeah i mean it's a good basketball team it, it was a it was a good solid win for us and it's you know it'll be uh obviously they're not going to want to get swept on the road but uh going to mikhail's never an easy task so uh i'm i'm assuming they'll you guys will get their best effort, but, um, you know, to win did, down, there's another thing. Did your, did your athleticism, did your athleticism or the Arizona state's athleticism give them some problems? Cause Arizona state's think, a pretty athletic team. I think so. I think we, uh, we sped them up. Like I said, we, you know, we really heat up the basketball and we got in passing lanes and I thought that, yeah, even, even when they did get looks, it, it weren't easy looks. We kind of made them make tough shots over the top. And yeah, it was, you know, definitely Pac-12 after, after way after dark last night, the 9 p.m. tip. So we, uh, that's why I'm maybe moving a little sluggish today. But yeah, it was, uh, I think we did overwhelm them a little bit with just our, just our quickness and athleticism. All right, now let's talk a little bit about uh, why Why is there the gap between Arizona and ASU? And uh, we've talked about this before, but I am curious about this because, Arizona, Arizona State, you've got a you got a basketball coach in Bobby Hurley that plays a fun style of basketball. Let's be honest. It's a fun style to watch. It's a fun style to play. You've also got a city with a ton of local talent. You've also got a city where you know you've got the prep schools. What what am I missing? Why isn't it why hasn't it been more sustainable? Because it does feel like ASU should be really good on a very consistent basis, Kyle. Yeah, I mean, I think it's obviously, uh, you know, the big the big joke up here is, you know, uh, oh, Arizona State, we've heard it for years, is the sleeping giant, you know, it's like, okay, well, you know, at some point, we might want to wake, wake up, up. You, know? Um, you know, and I think, you know, there's been there's been stretches, like, I think I've told you, Mike, and I might have even said it on, on one of the shows is, you know, when Harden was here, and, and uh, Lute had just retired, and ASU had won five in a row. I mean, in my head, I was like, all right, now it's over. Now, you know, now we got them, you know, you know, this is, this is where the tides turn and, and, um, you know, this, they just have never been able to sustain it. There's been stretches where, um, you know, Arizona state has, has had some really good years and, and then it just, you know, then they just have some down years, but I think, uh, you know, to me in college hoops, you know, tradition and, um, and just connection to former and past players and, and stuff like that is so huge. And I think that's what, you know, Arizona does such a good job of. And, and we're trying to do better at ASU. I mean, I'm, I'm actually getting with some people, you know, working on some alumni stuff that 
we're just trying to connect, you know, because, I mean, we have had, you know, we do have a, a little bit of good history. I mean, the, you know, the Fat Leavers, the Byron Scotts, the Fat Lever, Tucson native Fat yeah. Lever. <laughs> yeah. So um, we're trying to, uh, you know, trying to do that. And like I said, with some of the things that Bobby's done um, since he's been here, you know, hopefully we can, you know, continue to build. And, and you know, I, I tell people all the time, you, you guys know, I mean, people that follow me, I'm, I'm like the Don King of ASU basketball. I'm the, right. I'm the hype guy. I'm trying anything I can, you know, um, and it's not, you know, it's not it always easy. You know what it comes down to, to me, it, it comes down to the coach. You hear this all the time, but it really does kind of come down to the coach. And I, like I said, I, I like Bobby Hurley for ASU. I think that he's fine, but listen, um, you look at Alabama football. With Nick's, people think that Alabama football, these young kids coming up, oh, these youngsters coming up, they think it's just been this for 500 years. No, I remember Mike Shula. I remember Dennis Francione. Nick Saban comes in, and it's totally different. Arizona, you could say this. I think you could say much the same. Yeah, uh, your guy Doug's uh, buddy Sean Miller. Had they hired Kevin O'Neill, my guy, instead of Sean Miller, hmm. Arizona basketball could be in a drastically different place. I think the coach is what really kind of spins off everything, and you've got to have somebody that wants to be there you've got to have somebody that wants a has a vision and i think that's something that the arizona coaches the the really good ones here have been able to have is that coach with that vision of what they want to do and i think it just works from there yeah and i mean uh you know your guys football program is a perfect example yeah. i mean i i've i've been arguing with my buddies in tucson uh since day one that i i just I didn't like the hire at all in in a selfish <laughs> right. way because i thought it was a great hire so i mean i I thought, uh, you know, Jed Fish was the, was the perfect guy to turn that thing around, and obviously he has. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's so important. And I think, uh, you know, like like I've been saying for us, I think, um, you know, having a guy like Coach Hurley that can inject some energy and some life into a, a program that's been up and down. Um, you know, I, I just I think he's the right guy for us, and we just got to continue to build. Now we are in a totally different. <laughs> dynamic as far as college sports are and you know money is not equal <laughs> right uh, right now but um you know that's why it's in, i think he said yesterday in his press conference uh, the most important thing for our program right now isn't isn't redoing the arena which we need badly but um it's nil we need to do better so uh you know i'm trying to help any way i can on that side, side of things and um you know it's just going to be a challenge now, listen, you have a very uh, prominent gymnast in your family. When those millions start raking in, is there going yeah. to be the Kyle.nil to ASU? Oh, man. Oh, he, right now, all he's doing is costing me money every time he gets better. So uh, <laughs> I told him the other day, I said, man, can't you just be mediocre, dude? You're, 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 every time you go up a level, you, you cost me more money. But, yeah, maybe maybe down the road uh, we'll, we'll, we'll put money back into the devils. This is a, this is a fun question for Five of a Kind Media. Top five Sun Devil players ever. James Harden, duh. Uh, Fat Lever, duh. Byron Scott, Ike Diago. Do you go Eddie? Do you do you put Eddie House in your starting five? Your backcourt made Eddie House, who you made look good. Yeah, I I got to go Eddie. I mean Eddie, what he did scoring wise. I mean not just yeah. the sixty one point games, but all the forty point games. And uh, yeah, Eddie's Eddie's got to be up there just just the way he shot the basket. And that's what I, I was telling someone. We were at Cal last weekend, and one of the Cal guys was asking me about it, you know, and because the 61 point game happened there, and they didn't recruit him, and he was talking trash the whole time. And Hayward, California, if I'm not mistaken, was that right? Yeah, yep. yeah. And you know, the craziest part about Eddie's 61 point game is he had no layups or dunks. I mean, right. those were all jump shots. So right. I mean, that's why he's a, he's for me he's definitely in the top five. All right, now let's talk about where let's talk about the Pac-12 and uh, oh, let's talk about the Pac-12 in its last year. The Pac-12, we got to be honest here, Kyle. We all are going to miss it, but the Pac-12 stinks. There's a lot of bad teams. Um, I wanted to be able to throw you guys in there, but I certainly can't throw you guys in there. There's a lot of teams in there. I mean, listen, UCLA is awful. Um, USC, I have no clue what's going on there. Uh, Washington State, uh, Washington. It feels like honestly that this is going to be. Arizona, Oregon, ASU, uh, Colorado, and Utah. Says with a question mark. Yeah, I mean it's it's a it's a bizarre year. I mean, unlike football, where you know it just seemed like the last year it made you even more sad because right. <laughs> you're like finally, you know, with the, the conference was so good football wise. But uh, and I'm not saying the conference isn't good. I just think you have a bunch of teams that have a lot of the same problems. They're, they have a lot of new guys. You know, all portal guys, rebuilding rosters, and guys that are just trying to figure out how to play together and trust each other. I mean, 
USC, they have no business struggling like they're doing. That they one's have, wild I, to me. I mean, the talent they have there, I just, I can't, I don't ever get that. And that's been the case there, you know, a couple of years, um, you know, in the last, you know, several years. But um, yeah, UCLA, obviously, uh, Mick is uh, obviously not happy continuing to throw players under the bus every Why night. Can we talk about that for a second? Yeah. I want to ask, you were a scrappy player. You're an yeah. emotional guy. That. I'm sorry, man. At the end of the day, when you're basically calling your players stupid because they can't learn, why would anybody want to go play for that? I don't understand that at all. Yeah, I mean, I, I think Mick's a, a good, really good coach, obviously, and had success everywhere he's been. And, and he's a tough, hard-nosed guy, kind of an old-school guy, throwback guy. But, you know, maybe people are going to say it's too soft. You know, it's we're, we're being soft because, you know, it's not like it used to be. But I just, yeah, I don't – the couple of times recently when he's just, you know – basically hey not my fault these guys are young and they're not figuring it out you know i mean you don't need you could do that internally i mean you can handle all that stuff but just to kind of single out players in the media i don't agree with but um you know to each their own all right have you ever been to circle k kyle dot i know you've been to circle k i have been to circle i was at circle k yesterday so and del taco man and del taco have you tried the cheeseburger at del taco? yes man yes it's good it's not bad correct it's not bad yeah, people don't they don't understand. That. They don't yeah, you know what? Sometimes revolutionaries are miscast in their own time. <laughs> but uh anyways, join the inner circle for free. You can get down or download the Circle K app. Terms and conditions apply at participating locations. Visit CircleK.com for details. Maybe you'll find Kyle Dodd roaming around Tempe. Is there there's gotta be a Circle K in Tempe, correct? Yeah. Plenty yeah. of them, yeah. All right, yes. You know, that's what you, that's what you need. And let's see here. What else do we got? Oh, BetMGM, one other one. Arizona State. Do you are, are do you want to call your shot against uh, Colorado? Are you guys going to win? Uh, back in the say, ASU? Yeah, I'm I'm going to say we're going to go get get another one here and be 4-0. All right, now let's say the you think Kyle Dodd knows what he's talking about. So you would say, all right, I'm going to take Kyle Dodd's advice. We're going to sign up for BetMGM. Use bonus code PHNX. Place your first BetMGM Sportsbook wager through the BetMGM Sportsbook mobile app of at least $10. If that bet loses, your bonus bets will be available once your initial wager is settled. Check out the show notes for full details. And now let's hear Shane with the disclaimer. Problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Colorado, D.C., Illinois, Indiana, Kansas, Louisiana, Maryland, Mississippi, New Jersey, Nevada, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Virginia, West Virginia, Wyoming. Call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369, New York. Call 1-800-327-5050, Massachusetts. 21 plus to wager. Please gamble responsibly. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP, Arizona. 1-800-BETS-OFF, Iowa. 1-800-270-7117 for confidential help, Michigan. 1-800-981-0023, Puerto Rico, in partnership with Kansas Crossing Casino and Hotel. Visit BetMGM.com for terms and conditions. U.S. promotional offers not available in D.C., New York, or Ontario. All right, now looking looking ahead then a little bit. So you uh, Arizona are l- looking looking in this conference. Um, going ahead to the Big Twelve. What are your thoughts on going into the Big Twelve? It's about yeah, to get I mean, real. Uh, yeah, obviously. I mean, you're you're gonna go to places where you're gonna have full full arenas, and uh, you know, like just playing last weekend. You know, at the Bay Area, it was you know a little sentimental for me, knowing that we probably we're not gonna schedule non-conference games up there, you know, so that's right. probably my last trip up there. Um, and I remember when those places, those were two tough places to play. Now, that being said, there was nobody there at Stanford and nobody there at Haas Pavilion at Cal. And, you know, you're not going to have that in the Big 12. I mean, even even with students on break, um, you know, which is basically the excuse that everybody's using right now, um, you're, you're going to have full buildings. And I think that's going to be a change for, uh, you know, in the – the better for for the Pac-12 schools, and I think it's a conference that basketball probably um, you know means a little bit more to to the fan bases, and so yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a heck of a basketball conference. I know that. So yes, I mean, and that that's kind of the thing for me too is that you're going into the best basketball conference in the country, and you're going into a place where people actually really care about the product on the field. Now, I want to yeah. give you some credit. You were a big Jed Fish guy from day one. I was not. My bad, Jed. Um, to all of that. What did you see in Jed Fish that almost everybody in Tucson didn't? Because you were right about this, Kyle Dodd. Yeah, I just thought, um, you know, that program was not in a good spot, man. It, it was not. It's, you know, kind of where we were at, you know, going into the kid, you know, hiring Kenny. And we're hoping we, we, we experienced the same type of turnaround. But, the, you know, obviously the Sumlin years were not good um, and they were in a dark spot. And I thought just the stuff that he came in right off the bat and just the leadership stuff that he provided. And, 
uh, the culture that he built from day one, it's like, Hey, you know, and, and he didn't, he didn't stray. I mean, you got, he didn't have a great first year, obviously, but that was a lot of, you know, the hand that he had been dealt, but he never went, he never strayed off what he, what he said from day one. And I think, um, and eventually players bought in and people bought in and, and fans bought in. And, you know, obviously, uh, you know, you're looking at a 10 win football team that you guys just had this year and probably a, t- a team that's going to be in the top 10, maybe next year, top 15 for sure preseason. So, uh, I mean, obviously uh, pisses me off, man. It pisses me off that you guys have got it figured out, but I'm, I'm hoping for a same type turnaround uh, down at Tempe. I've always thought that at Arizona and ASU, you've got to have coaches that want to be there. That to me is the big thing. Um, I hate to give compliments to Dilly, but I think Dilly's going to be, I think Dilly's going to do well because this is Dilly's, Dilly wants to be there. Not only does Dilly want to be there, you can tell that however good ASU is going to be, it's going to be his full effort. And there's a lot of Jed yeah. Fish in there as well. I mean, we've seen coaches that don't put in the time, that don't really, you know, it's kind of doesn't really look like they really care if they're there or not. They're just collecting a paycheck. Dudes like Jed Fish, dudes like Kenny Dillingham, whether they're going to be successful or not, they want to be there. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think that's, uh, you know, that's huge, huge, you know, because it's just, you know, in these, like I said, these, these are these are weird times in college sports, you know, and you're having to re-recruit your own kids every year, plus hit the portal and and basically football. I can't even imagine how it doesn't even seem like it would be fun to try to get, you know, 60 new dudes every year, you know. Right. Um, but uh, yeah, those guys that are, that want to be there and, and have bought into their program, you know, uh, that they're they're leading. It's, you know, makes a huge difference. Yep. All right. Now. Uh, let's get let's get your predictions for tomorrow before we sign off here, Kyle. Dodd. A little bit of a shorter show today. What do you got for uh, Arizona? Utah? What do you got for Arizona, uh, Utah, and then Colorado ASU? Are you back in the A? Yeah, man. I think uh, Tommy obviously got their attention after you know Stanford game. Stanford, by the way, shot the lights out um, against you guys, and so I think uh, that was the first time I think since Tommy Lloyd's been there that I thought Arizona just looked like they weren't weren't all there mentally. And I think that was just a game we throw it away and I'm sure he got after him because <laughs> right. I mean, you put it on Colorado pretty good last night. So I, I don't see a, a letdown. I think that uh, you guys are headed for a, a home sweep and I feel like we're kind of um, trending in the right direction. And I think last night was our most complete game. It was a clean game. We looked, I, we looked like a legit team that could make some noise in the pack. And I, I think, um, Man, the mental part of this is so huge. So I think if just just us believing that we're good right now uh, will help us out. So I'm going both Arizona schools uh, get the sweep. All right. He is Kyle Dodd. I am merely Mike Luke. Kyle, as always, very much appreciate you hopping on here, buddy. And uh, we will talk with you later. Yeah, anytime, guys, and uh, right. we'll uh, we'll see you soon to pay up on the bet, man. I know. I'll be there. Also, no better time <laughs> to become PHNX diehard. Go to go PHNX. Get the merch. Get the Discord. You can make fun of me for having to wear a Kyle Dodd shirt. All right. On that note, we will be back with you post-game tomorrow. You have been listening to the AZ Wildcats podcast. <laughs> We all city like the mayor. 